heading up to LA. And um, what I do every single day is I go through all the different gig companies and check up on the news, right? Uh, the one thing that always sticks out and you'll see multiple stories are obviously stories on safety, who got shot, who got stabbed, who got, you know, those are the real sad daily stories. But then in between, you know, there's news from everywhere and this time it's from France. And I got to say, uh, with a combination of strong French unions, David Sink in the house, as well as the French government, they fought and they fought and they fought, they were relentless. And they got a minimum through, a minimum per ride, right? The absolute minimum. And this is a net value. This is not even gross. I think the gross is like $10 something. But the net, the net increase or the net minimum, sorry, not increase, the net minimum per trip was $8.25. That's the starting point, right? And that should be across the board for every country. Tanzania, for example, in Africa, where I used to live, um, they just fought for a 25% increase. And if you don't get the government on your side, and the problem is both sides of the aisle, whether it's Democrats or Republicans, are simply not supporting drivers on this. I don't know why. Maybe we haven't put enough pressure on them. Maybe the unions haven't done their job properly, right? But other countries can do this, ladies and gentlemen. Other countries stick together. They fight. I know my friends in the UK that I communicate with at least a few times per month. They fought for an increase. Canada fought for an increase. Tanzania just got a 25% increase. And I think it's pretty remarkable that the French put their, you know, they put their feet down and they said, listen, we, 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 we're not going to drive unless it's $8.25 minimum per trip net not even gross net right big difference net and gross so how do we duplicate those efforts here in the united states right um and and again feel free we have 67 people in the house please smash this thing at, at the bottom it looks like a, a thumb up it's a like button it helps a lot in the algorithms pushes the videos up uh shows up higher in the searches the more likes and the more likely uh, we have the, um, you know, the companies look at these videos because if, every time I make a video, I'm sending a message to the company. The other day, someone asked me, you know, do you have something personal going on? Do you have a grudge against the CEO of Uber, Dara Koshashawi? Now, I have something personally going on and I've spoken about it very openly in my channel, right? I will fight until I get paid. Right. And I will hold this guy's feet over the fire until he makes the changes. And that's just not me. That's, you know, all of us combined fighting, all of us combined striking, all of us combined sharing on social media. We will get our goals achieved. Right. And that is we absolutely deserve better, better pay. Just look at what France just manage to do i mean if they can do it we can do it my friends if the uk can do it we can do it if tanzania in africa can do it we can do it right we just have to get better organized we have too many little fractions we've got you know idg here right here drivers united here mobile alliance here all these little fractions and what we really need to be is on the same page and fight together we too split up you know we we we, we, we we're splitting up our our forces and we're not really achieving our goals because truth is we five million strong we should easily be able to put the pressure on these companies but if we're too divided at the end of the day if there are people that'll just i, I call them the desperado sorry for using that name and that that's not that's nothing it, it, it's it's not that these are uh, latin or spanish speaking drivers absolutely not i just use the, use the word desperado because it, it basically in English, I call I could call them the desperates, right? They will drive for anything, right? And 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 what happens very often is sadly that um, you know immigrants that come in from overseas um, never really seen money, uh, got to start working in order to you know gain traction in the system. People you know just touch down in the United States, 
never seen money overseas, let's say in Africa, let's say they're coming from, I don't know, Sudan or wherever, right? And when they see a couple of dollars that, wow, that looks like big money. Now, it's not big money, right? And even these newbies uh, that are doing this for the first time, um, think, wow, this is cash. It, it, it's not cash. And they'll figure out very, very quickly once they know what the cost of living is, once you know what it costs to rent an apartment, what it costs to make a mortgage payment, what it costs to put your kids in school, price of eggs, price of this, price of gas, they will quickly realize that they are driving for pennies. But in the beginning, I can tell you every newbie, it's just the way the algorithms are designed, enter the games thinking, wow, after one or two months, I can make some money. Until you're in their system, until you're in their algorithm, right? And then things start changing very, very rapidly, right? And right now, I mean, you can read comment after comment after comment. We've got Melissa's in the house. She says, are you going to encourage people to strike March the 17th, St. Paddy's Day? Um, I don't have anything on the horizon for St. Patrick's Day. I, had, I did that last year. Uh, my next strike that I'm going to get heavily involved in, um, I'm going to get heavily involved in is um, is uh, May Day. Stanley says, especially in Biden's America, uh, the, the, the mistake you're making, uh, Stanley, is that you're bringing politics into it, right? Because it, it doesn't matter who you look at, whether you look at Trump running up uh, record uh, spending or whether you say Biden's mismanagement, right? The bottom line is we, we, we've ne never seen deficits this high under the previous president and under the, cover, uh, under the current uh, president. So it's, it's not about getting uh, finger pointing and saying, oh, Trump or Biden. Politics aside, right? It's about putting the pressure on people that can make the changes, legislators, mayors, governors, senators, congressmen, right? You got to introduce bills, bring them the hardcore proof. Doesn't matter whether it's a Republican or a Democrat, you got to bring them the proof and saying, hey, gig workers are being abused. You need to step up. And I just feel like in the United States, we do not put enough pressure on our statements, statesmen. We don't put enough pressure on our legislators. Uh, why can the UK do this? Why, why can the France, why can France get the government to implement a minimum of $8.25 per ride, right? Can you imagine here in the United States, you have a minimum of an Uber Eats delivery paid net, net, not gross, net to the delivery driver for an Uber Eats food delivery, $8.25 minimum starting point, right? Um, so that's that's what we need to fight for. We need to do a way, way better job in the United States. We way too fractionalized. We, 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 we fighting each other, Democrats and Republicans, and we're getting fuck all done. We're getting nothing done. They're showing us how to do it overseas. They're showing us the way that because we are so divided, because we are so alienated, because we cannot get our legislators, we, we don't make the efforts to get our legislators and our politicians to make these changes or push for changes. We get nothing accomplished, accomplished. And we too split, split up, we're too fractionalized, right? Like I said, you've got the IDG here, you've got Ride Share Drivers United, you've got the Mobile Alliance, Mobile Working Alliance here, right? We're all over the map, but we're not getting anything done. And that needs to get better. So the question is, do all of these organizations, associations, unions want to come together and what, form one governing body and exercise a lot of power, right? Athens, Georgia in the house, shout out to Aaron in Athens, Georgia. I've been there. Great place. Got a good friend there. Um, you know, are, are we ready to fight together or are we going to still accept trash? Are we still going to keep on driving for trash? You know, look, I'm, I'm, I'm looking at what, what Uber and Lyft are paying in some states, like let's say Florida. How on earth can you drive 
for that type of money, Florida drivers? How, how can you do it? How, how can you even operate your car and manage your expenses accepting those type of rates? It's, it's unbelievable, right? So who knows where this goes, but the only way we become successful is by actually working together. I died laughing when I saw, what is it? When I saw, oh, the Uber, yeah, the favorite. I made this video last night and man, I ate the whole bag of cherries. My stomach did not feel good. I ate, I ate two pounds of cherries. You know, that's what you should be doing every week, eating two pounds of cherries, the best paying trips. So a little bit of humor, but it's the truth. It's the truth. You do get further, you do make more money when you cherry pick. Now, I'm gonna make a live feed tonight and it's on a very, very interesting topic. Um, both Uber and Lyft and maybe people have come across this in Facebook pages. A lot of drivers are getting deactivated over this new term collusion fraud. Collusion fraud. Colluding to do fraud. Now both Uber and Lyft don't tell you what that means. Oh, you got deactivated over collusion fraud. And what the person then, what the driver then does is they try to reach out to support. They get nowhere. No one has been able to tell me what collusion fraud means. So I started researching and I come across this very, very interesting paper put out by a university where they talk about this collusion fraud and it's very 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 detailed um, I would have to have those documents in front of me uh, a lot of research went into it and these different professors and students published this piece that shows what collusion fraud is right and what they basically said in a nutshell, and I'll be making the live feed later, is that collusion fraud means that a group of drivers in a specific area are manipulating the algorithms. Now, let's take a step back. If in fact, if in fact a driver is trying to manipulate or out manipulate an algorithm which already is working against him or her right it basically means how does that what does that driver do to outwit to outsmart that algorithm that is already working against them right and they and and, and i will read it to you it's a long 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 piece and it's a heavy piece um breaks down to the conclusion that drivers are being, um, collusion fraud I am of the opinion that these the panel of professors and this panel of students got the story completely wrong because they are basing their findings on you know market surges what's accepted, what's not accepted, what's cherry-picked, what's not cherry-picked, what's declined. Um, what they're getting wrong is, from the get-go, is that Uber and Lyft already have these abusive, the house always wins algorithms in place. And now we are supposed to, as independent, we're independent contractors, ladies and gentlemen, we get to pick and choose, right? Very, very important to understand what an independent contractor is. If we are treated as true independent contractors, we get to pick and choose which trips we want to take and which we decline. But because we are declining, because we are working against that algorithm, 
we are apparently involved in collusion fraud, right? And they explain in great detail, that video will follow tonight, what collusion fraud is. Now, I would not be surprised if this paper, if this research was paid by Uber and Lyft, right? Just basically to cover themselves, pushing the blame onto drivers and say, oh, the drivers are actually colluding and manipulating the algorithm. That is not the truth. The people that created the algorithms, and you talk about senior management and the engineers at Uber and Lyft, are the people that even have psychologists involved, right? They even hire psychologists. How can we bring people in and how can we extract the maximum from them, right? And when you find out how to do that effectively, now you have to put in place engineers that write those algorithms. And I can tell you what, those algorithms are abusive. They are bait and switch. They manipulate drivers. They extract the most out of you. They make you basically work more for less money, right? So I don't see how drivers are doing collusion fraud. This is actually the company, if you really want to use the word collusion fraud, it is basically executives on higher level colluding with engineers to say, find ways, find algorithms, which are basically fraudulent, ladies, let's just face it, right? They're fraudulent to extract more money from the driver and from the rider. That to me is true collusion fraud. So don't try and push that term on us and then deactivate us over that, right? And I've yet to find a driver that says, Oh, this is the expl explanation that Uber and Lyft gave me how I colluded and committed fraud, collusion fraud. No one can tell me. Now, I have had um, drivers come to us at Gig Rocket and we filed the appeal to get them back on the platform. And this has just happened recently. There's a lot of collusion fraud deactivations. Again, collusion fraud deactivations, right? So we put in the paperwork and then we force the company to explain how did this driver collude and commit fraud? Show us. And if you cannot show us, we're taking you to small claims court where you get to show the proof. Interestingly enough, interestingly enough, the moment and I'll prove it later on in tonight's live feed. I have a couple of drivers where we filed the appeal and then filed the small claims. Uber and Lyft, every single time when it came to collusion fraud and we said, show us the proof, right? We going to small claims said, if you drop the charges against us, we will reinstate your account. Meaning that Uber and Lyft have no intention of proving or showing or, or showing proof that there was collusion fraud because they immediately reactivated the drivers. Now, in my world, a reactivation of a driver is a victory. But the driver's back on the platform, the driver gets to make money again. But if you got deactivated over collu collusion fraud, yes, sure, we will fight it at Gig Rocket. But will we ever know, will we ever find out, will we ever see proof on Uber and Lyft what true collusion fraud is all about? Again, I'm going to repeat myself here. The moment we filed the small claims against the companies, they immediately backed off and said, we'll reactivate the driver. Now show us the proof, Uber and Lyft. Show us the proof, engineering department. How did this driver collude? With whom did he collude? How did he collude? How did he commit fraud? They wouldn't say it. So that is not surprising at all, exactly. It's not surprising at all that they do not, or they are not willing to show their cards, right? And I think tonight's live feed, I, I, I really want to get this out there. 
it's a heavy, heavy piece written by a university, by, by multiple people that came up with the phrase that drivers are committing collusion fraud. Now these type of surveys, these type of thing, these type, this type of research costs a lot of money. Who is behind it? Did Uber and Lyft sponsor this to cover their ass? So I'll let you be the judge. But I have an interesting take on it tonight. You'll see, and um, I'd, I'd love you to I'd love you to participate on this live feed tonight. I don't exactly know what time it will be on. Now. Um, I did an interview with the Destin driver, a lot of questions, uh, he recorded it once, um, had some technical difficulties, I agreed to record it a second time, it was about an hour and 20 minutes, he texted me this morning and said oh, we didn't capture, we captured the voice, we captured the interview but we didn't capture the visual, now the visual would have been interesting because obviously there's a lot of facial expressions, there's a lot of laughter, there's a lot of body language involved, but I just said to the Destin driver, I don't particularly want to do this interview a third time, right? The same answers, you know, three and a half, four hours of interviewing, I'm, I'm not interested in that. Run with the second version. So I hope he puts it out there because he asks very good questions. He's got a great channel, Destin driver. And that's not Dustin is driving, that's Destin, the city and the area in Florida. Destin, D-E-S-T-E-D-E-S-T-I-N, not to be confused with my friend and a successful YouTuber, Dustin is driving, who I greatly admire, who I greatly respect. Uh, Dustin knows that, how highly, highly I think of him. I really do, because Dustin is such a damn hard worker, right? He really went for it. He really went for it. He explored every single angle. And I, I, I truly, truly admire that about Dustin. How, you know, where we started off and where he is. He has way more subscribers than I have, right? He has over 200,000 subscribers. If I add up all my eight channels, I might be lucky if I have 120,000 subscribers. So he, he has done extremely well on YouTube must be doing very very well financially but I'm happy for him because he worked his ass off to get there so huge shout out to my friend Dustin we go way back we used to phone each other and talk about referrals and then he got wrongfully deactivated I remember how that pissed him off we're talking about that years and years back but um, it's good to have those type of friendships I have the same type of friendship with Harry is Harry Campbell the rideshare guy uh, also have the greatest respect Randy knows this for the Uberman the original Uberman so these are all people that I admire respect and will always speak fondly about now Sergio introduced Sergio who does great pieces with the money club introduced me to a new young guy that's on the rideshare guys channel me his video uh, you know way younger than Sergio and I and this guy is very aggressive very truthful very factual he's gonna be an exciting youtuber to watch he's part of the the rideshare guys channel so I'll probably do a review on him I like him I've watched his video he's good he's really really good I don't know his name maybe you guys know it but he, he he's very much like Sergio and myself DNA wise right we go for the jugular we don't mince uh, words we put the facts out there black or white we don't move in the gray zone this youngster is great and he's going to places so i'll do a video on him as well and i'm glad that harry is such great different speakers youtubers within his channel which is which is a very successful formula for his channel now anybody out there that wants share some exciting news with 69 people in the house got 49 likes hydrate 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 my friends um, I drove down to Orange County made a quick 300 bucks uh, started the morning with two two hundred dollar trips 400 plus three and I'm on 700 already and it's three o'clock 
I have two more trips to go already on 700. I will make a video showing how I make 500 to 1500 dollars a day. If I make under 500 dollars driving, I get upset. I haven't reached my goals, right? But consistently every day, minimum 500, many days 1500. Probably today will end up being a, I think, a thousand or eleven hundred dollar day. And I'll make another video, share a little bit about my formula. But when you guys go out and do the private chauffeur course, which hundreds and hundreds, if not thousands of people have already taken that worldwide, not just in the United States, but London, Berlin, everywhere, Paris, uh, Vancouver, Toronto, people have taken my private chauffeur course and I've showed them the formula. I've showed them how to get private clients. That is where you 100% an independent contractor. That is where you make the real money. And I say real money, um, again, 500 to $1,500 is my day, right? There are some days I'll make 1500 to $2,500 a day but things have to line up it has to be a big booking or a big a booking through a company or a studio for the entire day and then i can charge that type of money or a long distance trip but at minimum i mean if i go out making 400 dollars a day I, get, I i'm in a bad mood i'm in, i'm in a bad mood i mean that's driving that doesn't include my other companies right i'm talking about driving so i will make a video sharing that formula how to really build out your private clientele, how to make at least 500 to 1500 every day. Michael's in the house, Southern Maine. In the house, question, how will the deactivation process work for Fair Eats? So on Fair Eats, there is a, a first strike, second strike, third strike, you're out. Now, if there are major, major violations, uh, those will be looked upon very, very closely. There will be vetting of drivers. There will also be far more stringent vetting of riders. Uh, way too easy for a rider or a passenger to get onto Uber or uh, Lyft or onto the DoorDash platform or on the Uber Eats platform. Way too easy, right? So it, it's, it'll be a vigorous uh, checkup on the rider as well as the driver. But review panel right there is a review panel and every deactivation gets looked at by a review panel right it's not a one-sided thing where uber says oh the rider made a complaint deactivated go and f good luck to you dear driver go and fight for your account back no there is actually a review panel made up of drivers remember it's a cooperative the cooperative is run by drivers so the review panel is made up by drivers right so that's how the deactivations work at fair rideshare and fair eats the food delivery company is that there's actually a review panel made up by drivers who look at the situation who look at the issue and say should this driver be deactivated should this rider be deactivated if so why and then a group of drivers makes the decision. There is no such thing as at Uber or Uber Eats or DoorDash. A rider makes an allegation and you're out. Good luck, right? Good luck. If they think you've committed collusion fraud, you're out. Good luck. Go and prove it, right? And sadly, you have to often go all the way up to court, small claims court or arbitration, or if you're lucky, if you if you opted out of all your arbitration clauses, you can take them to civil court and sue for the real money, right? That's why it's an important, it's important to opt out of every single upgrade or change in their terms of service. Every time they upgrade or change to a new LLC or, or, or try to get more sneaky, um, you have to opt out within those 30 days, my friends. Very important. Because if you forget to opt out once, they will force you into arbitration. You want to opt out from the very beginning, from the moment you sign up as a newbie, every single change thereafter, even if it's once a year, once every two years, once every six months, every time they change their terms of terms and conditions, you opt out. So 
if you ever do get into a big accident, if there ever is a murder or a huge dispute, you can take them to civil court, right? Civil court, usually $25,000 upwards, $100,000, $500,000, sometimes millions of dollars, right? You want to keep that door open. You don't want to box yourself into the arbitration clauses, right? And I've made many, many videos showing drivers how to opt out of the lift changes and out of the Uber changes. Every time there's a change, there is a certain way you have to opt out. By, by writing um, to the company, registered letter, through the email that they provide, in the latest update and then it has to be worded a specific way it has to come from your email associated with your account with your name with your phone number and the platform that you're on and uh, it has to be done properly how are you Aram's in the house no I cannot believe it's actually raining again this upsets me was not supposed to rain. Here it is. The rain is back. LA. You're welcome. Now to my friend uh, Nicholas Remelman, Nick. Uh, he goes by Slick Nick. You, you've seen him in, in, in most of my videos and live feeds. Um, he had someone hack into his system this morning, showed me the screenshots, immediately contacted uber and said hey i got hacked um the hacked in changed his phone number changed his bank accounts obviously trying to get his money out um but nicholas was on it so he called me up and he said jesus this just happened red alert red alert what do i need to do so you know when, when you have something like that and you're trying to contact uber support by phone good luck they don't usually get it resolved uh, very often you may have to take a trip down to a hub like and he's in LA So he would probably have to take a trip down to Redondo and show them That someone hacked into their account. The good thing is he kept all the proof all the screenshots. So be aware There will always be scamsters out there um, What I think is we had two major hacks in the last three months a lot of information was gathered and um Uber covered it up and said, no, it was nothing big. Uh, they only got employees, employers info. They didn't get the driver's info. Um, I didn't think so. I, I think that the hackers probably got their hands on really, really good information on driver's information, passwords and everything. And obviously they're not gonna act right away. Maybe they usually act months later. So I, I think that's what's happening right now because um, a lot of drivers have, are having their accounts hacked. Uh, monies disappear out of their accounts. And, uh, you know, Uber pretends like, oh, you know, we don't know what's going on. Again here, three o'clock peak traffic on the four or five. Shadow band, you know, it's, it's interesting that you use those words, uh, you just use the word shadow band. Um, I, I do think that, um, I do think, and I read, by the way, I read a lot of emails, a lot of text messages, and a lot of comments daily, right? Comments various on various social media platforms. I do believe that if you are not working entirely to the rhythm and the beat of Uber and Lyft. Let me repeat that. If you're not working entirely to the rhythm and the beat of Uber and Lyft as they would want you to operate, as they would want you to participate, you know, sign up, chase diamond, go here, go there, right? If you do not comply or if they, their algorithms show that you might be a little bit smart or you might be cherry picking, that you get shadow banned or you get a timeout, you might get a timeout for one or two hours, right? It's like punishment. It's like little school, school, board, school boy days. You know, go, go stand in the corner for 10 minutes, time out, right? I, I truly, truly feel that both Uber and Lyft and other companies operate that way. If you do not entirely 
go by their drum beat and their rhythm, they will shadow ban and punish you. And they have ways of doing it. So we've got 67 people in the house, 59 likes. Please smash this thing, thumbs up. They do 100% fact, yeah, I, I, I agree. I mean, and, and, and the reason why I agree with it is because I read it every day. I read the comments, you know. If I only read one comment or two comments about this shadow banning or punishing, I would think, you know, maybe the person's making it up. Maybe they're a little bit like schizophrenic, right? But no, it's happening, it's, it's reality, right? Reality, are, reality is that tips are still being stolen. Reality is that riders are paying ridiculous amounts. Drivers are being squeezed. Drivers are being squeezed to the max and that they will lure you, you know, with surges or, or attractive offers into an area where they don't have drivers. And it doesn't always mean that you get what is promise or what the offer was about, right? So what does he say here? When, when do you think fair ride share will start operating across all of the United? It's a good question. Um, I cannot answer that because um, I'm not ultimately the decision maker at uh, Fair Ride Share and Fair Eats. I'm not. The, the, the decisions are made in Canada and the ultimate decisions are really made by drivers. So when drivers get enough drivers in a market, if you have a thousand drivers in a city, that's when Fair will say, okay, we have enough drivers to, to open up that city, right? So they have to be a certain amount of drivers in a city before they open up that zip code or those zip codes, right? There have to be a certain amount of registered people in Miami or LA before they... I do know that um, New York and LA are the first um, US cities. And I've asked, you know, what follows? Would, would, what are the other s cities that follow? and both the president and the vice president of that new company um, haven't shared that information with me because maybe they think okay i'll go and reveal it on youtube right but the but the ultimate plan is to saturate canada and the united states and then go over to other countries right as a cooperative right drivers managing drivers Oh, this cop just pulled this guy over. Dietmar Stahl in the house, veteran. I saw that, a screenshot. $16 for what, 56 minutes. Was that right? I think you sent it to me earlier on. Did I get that right? Let's see. I sent a screenshot from a $16 for 58 minutes. You know, and I, I get a lot of good intel from LA, from Dietmar Stahl, out of UberX. He's an UberX veteran with over 30,000 trips. He knows what he's doing. He's the real deal. Thank you, Karim. I, I, I appreciate you, Kasim. Um, now, Dietmar, let me tell you about him. I've met him several times. He is who he is. He's a veteran. And what I, what I like about Dietmar is that he follows up. You know, he follows up with the news channels. He follows up with the companies. He follows up the social media and he calls them out. He's not shy to call them out, right? And when you have um, Dara Koshashawi, CEO, coming out on Bloomberg, you heard this, right? That drivers are making $39 on average per hour. $39. I don't know where he got those numbers from, Dara Koshashawi, the $39. But what I do know is that a month and a half later on CNN, in your interview with Amanpour, and, and New York is apparently with some of the highest paid drivers. You said that they were making an average of $36. So where did that $3 vanish in 60 days? From an average of $39 in your Bloomberg interview to $36 in your CNN interview. How did you erase those $3? Or do you have, what do you have, short-term memory? Or you can't recollect what you said in your last interview? Look. 
you have a memory like an elephant and you remember numbers, he's supposed to be the numbers guy, right? I'm a numbers guy, but I'm also a people's guy. I'm a human guy, right? I, 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 I know how to treat people. It's good to be a, a numbers guy, but you have to be a, a, a people's guy. And if, if Dara Koshishawi, the numbers guy, comes out in Bloomberg saying drivers are making an average of $36 per hour. A, show it. Bring us the proof. You can't prove that. There were thousands of comments that followed by drivers. That is not true, right? $36 is not true. Sorry, $39 is not true. And then on CNN with Amanpour, um, bullshit after bullshit, lie after lie after lie. I called out all the lies. I very clearly, very clearly remember you saying $36. So what changed in 30, in, in 30 to 60 days when you, when you went from $39 on average per hour to 36? Where did those $3 vanish? Slick Nick's in the house. Slick, maybe you want to, I've been telling the people that your account got hacked and that you took measures, uh, do update us, right? I do truly care that you get your account back and that that hacker, whoever it is, is held accountable. And by the way, Slick Nick, um, that phone number that the hacker um, updated, that's his personal phone number, you should call that. You should call that because he substituted your phone number. Oh, you have a four appointment, a four o'clock appointment at the hub. And that's the first thing I said to Nicholas. You're not going to get this resolved on the phone. Go to the hub. Got Joseph Langford in the house. It says if you, if you're the only driver in an area and let algorithm pull you all over the place, not desperado trying to help riders, Uber doesn't care. No reward for doing right. Southern Maryland in the house. That's great feedback and I really appreciate that, Joseph. Um, Aram KH says, I haven't done LAX trips for over a month. Probably only one or two during the whole month. Now, little, if, now that we're on the topic of LAX, right? I, I, I do want to share with you tonight one of the most misleading bait and switch LAX screenshots that I've ever seen from Uber. It is so misleading. It says basically, you know, well, I'll do the video. Basically said, you know, there's a 50, you only have a 15 to 20 minute way to make this type of money. And you have to read and I'll read to you the fine, the fine print underneath, right? Because you're not going in there if there's a few hundred cars, believe me, it'll take one to two, maybe three hours. What? To, to, to get a $20, $30, $30 trip and you're sitting there for two hours at LAX? LAX is not worth it. That's why anytime I go to LAX, I can, I can, I've been there three times today to LAX. It's empty, folks. The only people that are really operating and making money at LAX, who are they? The taxi drivers. And we need to respect the taxi drivers because they are our brothers and sisters. They are our friends. They are not our enemies. Roger's in the house. But LAX, you talk about effing up, about mismanaging one of the top destinations in the country. Once upon a time, a huge money maker for drivers and for Uber and Lyft. Uber and Lyft have ruined, have absolutely ruined LAX for themselves. Meaning they've alienated the rider, too expensive, they take taxis, they're not paying the driver, they think that the driver is gonna um, operate for these pathetic rates that, that I'll read to you later. We're not interested, that's why LAX is empty. That's why LAX is dominated by taxis. Yego's in the house. Where are you, Yego? You out in the in the in in the in the desert? Are you out in La Quinta? Beautiful area, La Quinta, California. Living the lifestyle. RIP, hello, Professor. Glad to hear you again. Good. PST RIP in the house. Shout out to you, my friend, to your family. All the best. 
Wishing you nothing but health, love, and happiness. Cheers to you. Cheers to you all. Got 89 people in the house, 72 likes. Douche, are you in LA? Cool. We got to hook up if you're in LA. I did a drop off. I did a drop off this morning at LAX and uh, it was quite funny. The, there was a guy that came up and said, hey, and I'll show him later. Hey, can we take a selfie together? Thank you for fighting for us drivers in LA. I follow your videos. I bought this car because of you. I, you know who you are. I, I met you this morning. Uh, I'm sorry if I don't if I if I don't remember your name, but you introduced yourself to me. I got your photo. I'll show it later. And um, he said I, I went out and bought this car, did the private chauffeur thing, get the TCP, and now I'm making the real money following your formula. And I said that just makes me so happy, dude. It makes me so happy to see people step into their self-worth. Stephen Hines is in the house. So oversaturated in San Francisco at the airport queues. Yeah. Uber and Lyft are constantly full. Never happened in the last five years. But why are people sitting in these endless queues? I, I ask you, really. And, you know... Is it because people are willing to work for nothing these days? Are they that desperate that they'll sit in these endless queues at, at, at San Francisco or at, 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 at LAX? But when, you, when you're out there, you just don't see any cars. I mean, they, they, they're outside of the airport in their own holding lot. But like, is there... I absolutely, absolutely refuse, refuse to do any... Uh, ride share trips at airports right what i do every day is private drop-offs at airports and private pickups because they pay i charge more for the pickup than i charge for the drop-off the drop-off is easy boom terminal two three terminal three delta bye-bye terminal seven united airlines bye-bye have a great safe flight pickup is a whole different animal right you're looking at the arrival times, you're texting back and forth. You're gonna charge more for I charge more for the pickup than the drop-off. If you are a private driver, do you do the same? Dietmar says they price everything ridiculously low for the bonus. Sad. We got 98 people in the house. That's awesome. I welcome you all. I thought it was Friday, it's only Thursday, so we have another day and then the weekend starts. We got 79 if likes if you could smash the, if you haven't smashed the like button yet please get us over the 80 i'm going to try to get it up to 100 likes uh because if you if you hit those 100 likes on a youtube video it, it pushes it up in the uh, up in the youtube algorithm we get way more traffic uh sheriff says i need to meet you i'm here buddy you know where i'm i'm in la i'm in la We got a hundred people in the house. I see another Sienna over there. Get Lost Games is in the house. Stop by sometimes. Yes, sir. <laughs> Ship coming into the harbor. Let's see what it looks like in the front here. There we go. A little, little bit of a frontal view. That's the traffic here. Four or five. Eighty-nine. Thank you. We're already on eighty-nine likes. Eleven more, and we're on a hundred. Gracias. Danke schön. Spasiba. Merci. C'est français. Bye, danke. Dutch. Which other languages have we left out? Obrigado. Thank you. Ninety-one, baby. Ninety-one in the house. L.A. Was raining. Please. Stop the rain. I'm, 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 I'm so freaking done with the rain. Done with the rain. I'm sure we have enough water now. I'm sure we have enough water in our dams. I'm sure our water level's up. I'm done with rain for right now. I want my Cali sunshine back. 98. Yes, 97. We're getting there. We're climbing. We're climbing. We're climbing. We're climbing the ladder. I just um, dropped in at Long Beach. Two more, Roger. Help me get those two more. Dos, por favor. Zwei, bitte. Tuya, as a belief. Deux, s'il vous plaît. Two, please. I've said any, any other language I've left out. Just, uh, we're on a hundred. We're a hundred people in the house. hundred out of a hundred. That's a good sign. Play the lottery. hundred out of a hundred. 
100 people in the house, 100 likes. I love it. So I was just in the LBC Long Beach City working on my Pontiac. Uh, I, you will briefly see my new Pontiac um, in a video that I'm bringing out. And uh, this video, I have two mechanic shops. I work with a mechanic, Ruben, who's been in the business for 40 years. I personally have known him for 23 years. We have a mechanic shop in Long Beach together where we do Uber and Lyft every day, about 15 to 20 inspections for Uber and Lyft. I marketed it in the videos and we're up to about 15 to 20 inspections per day at our Long Beach uh, Lincoln Auto Electric. That's any electrical work you need, any mechanical work, you just mention my name, you will get the best discount ever. You'll get the best service and the best discount if you go in there and speak to Ruben and Nick and mention my name. That's a fact. And those testimonials I've had from countless drivers that said, thank you. They solved my problem for a fraction of the cost. And we get the cars inspected and back up on the platform again. So great service by Ruben and Nicholas, but I will be interviewing Ruben because when I got into the business of fleets, when I started building out fleets, and right in the beginning, I was dibbling and dabbling with Priuses, and I even had those Nissan Leafs, which were terrible. I wasn't a big fan of the Nissan Leafs. I think they only got like 155 miles back at the time when they came out. But um, now it's just all SUVs, and all the SUVs I get fixed down in Long Beach or up here in Santa Monica at our mechanic shops. And guess what? It is because of Ruben, and this is the interview that I did with Ruben, the mechanic, 40 years in the business. How do you get 50 to 100,000 miles additional, extra, out of a car? How do I get 50 to 100,000 miles more than the average person gets out of a Suburban, out of a Cadillac? And the, the key, what do you think the answer is? There's only one word liquids right liquids plural because a car has a lot of different liquids and the interview is with Ruben talking about liquids right now if you buy a car uh, you know those people will say oh you know come in every eight to ten thousand miles change your oil no change your oil every five thousand miles you might you might say well that's ridiculous that's ridiculous. No, it's not ridiculous. You want to make sure you have the right oil, right? The weight of the oil, the right type of oil for your engine, right? Don't get experimental. Don't just say, oh, I'm going to run into a supermarket and get oil. Make sure you're putting the right oil in your car and frequently, right? Not only just the oil, but the oil filter. The oil filter captures all of those little shavings, those little metal shavings and all the shit, right? Coolant, anti-antifreeze. Make sure you have the right antifreeze for that model car. Make sure you do your front and rear differential oils more frequently than they tell you. Your transmission oil changes more frequently than they tell you. And guess what? You get your 50,000 miles extra. Plug-in hybrid, beautiful car. Water fluid, no. I mean, if you... Uh, I, water fluid doesn't necessarily have all the right minerals, right? There are many, like especially when you look at the German cars, whether it's BMW or Mercedes, and they have their own, their own specific coolants. It's because there is a specific type of mineral mixture in it, right? So, I mean, water will always solve the problem, but don't buy like aftermarket shit, especially when it comes to antifreeze or coolants, because you can really, really do a lot of damage to your engine. Always get the right stuff, right? If they advise Delco, if they say, hey, you need a specific Mercedes coolant, spend the extra money. Don't be cheap, right? Don't get those aftermarket products or run into pet boys and whatever they try to sell you their cheap variant that they make. Don't do it. Get the right stuff. Get the right oil. Get synthetic oil, right? Do not save on liquids. All my cars, 
50 to 100,000 more than what they should be making. So I'll push out Omar's in the house, Melvin's in the house. Don't be cheap. Don't be cheap on your maintenance. I think that sums it up. Don't be cheap on your maintenance. Don't cut corners, right? Do not cut corners when it comes to maintenance. Because if you have a workhorse, I can show you a workhorse right here. I mean, this car should easily get a few hundred thousand miles, that one right there, right? If you take care of that car, it'll run forever, right? The, the, the biggest expense on that maybe be the, the hybrid battery. And if you guys ever need hybrid batteries in LA, you hit me up, right? I have the best guy who gets used hybrid batteries. He's up on Tahanga and Ventura in Studio City. Get you the best prices on, on a battery for your hybrid, whether it's for your Prius, whether it's for your Sienna, any hybrid engine you, uh, uh, battery you need, go over, hit him up. His name's Michael. He's over at Ventura and Tahanga in Studio City. You'll save a fortune. So my client, uh, extremely, extremely wealthy lady who lives in Malibu, um, five times a week, I, I do private trips for her. Not gonna mention her name. She has a really unique Audi sports car, beautiful car, and um, big gash in the driver door and she was freaking out, right? And she wanted it fixed quickly. So went online, checked around. We actually found in that Nardo gray, I think it's called Nardo gray. It's that like cement gray for that specific car. We found an entire door, like the entire door with the electrics, everything just had to be replaced, right? Um, for a fraction of the cost. There was nothing wrong with it. Just it came out of a car that was in an accident. So when you know, like in LA and Sun Valley, and you should know these areas in your city, they have these auto part areas where you can get auto parts, second hand parts. And usually they strip down vehicles that have been in accidents and you get the parts for one third of a price, right? One third of the price. So managed to find her a door for her RS6, beautiful car, like a little racing car. And man, was she happy. Was she happy. Got a, got a taxi right next to us here, yellow taxi driving a, a I don't know, it looks like a taxi, but this doesn't have any signage. Taxi man, there he is, taxi man. Uh, it's a taxi. I saw a client in the back. Merci, merci. Dorian, Brian, avec plaisir, avec plaisir, Dorian. Uh, I already answered the question on the cooperative. I know that New York and LA are their first markets. And as soon as I have an update for Florida or Texas, I'll let you know. Um, again, the decisions come out of Canada. I, I don't make the ultimate decisions. I, I wish I did. I wish I could speed everything up. Um, I'm just the recruiter, man. I know how to sell. I, I recruit like crazy. I recruited 35,000 drivers for the cooperative. I remember recruiting 14,000 drivers for Juno and they paid zero. They completely screwed me over. I tried to sue them and they closed up their operations in New York and they pissed off. I think they went to Israel. So I didn't get the money. Talking about other YouTube channels being fluffers. Um, if, if someone if someone is not willing to hold their feet over the fire, and when I say they, the executives, if someone is not willing to confront the company, to confront the decision makers, right? It usually means 
protective in nature, they're protecting their turf, maybe they're protecting their referral code or protecting their channel and a little bit afraid to confront these companies. The very last thing in my DNA is fear, right? I learned at a very, very young age to eliminate fear. I learned in the army to eliminate fear. And I, I, I'm not like Prince Harry that goes out and says, oh, I killed 25 people in Afghanistan. I wouldn't advertise that, right? Um, you know, I don't talk what I did in the South African army, but let me tell you something. That was real fear. And that was the school of fear. And that was the school on how to combat fear for two and a half years. So when, when I confront, when I face people, and I've had calls from attorneys, I've had threats from the attorneys, I've had numerous threats. I don't buy into the threat or the fear, right? Because I know who I am, I know what I'm capable of, and if ever confronted with these people in public, I would take care of it, right? Might not end pretty, but I would take care of it. So I don't go in there with fear. And that is how my channel is geared. If I were fearing these executives or these attorneys, I wouldn't be able to make these type of videos, right? The video, the live feed that I make tonight about collusion fraud is once again going for the jugular, right? You got to go for their jugular. Companies are blaming drivers for collusion fraud when really the biggest committers of fraud, colluding in fraud, are in fact the riot share companies and the people making the decisions on the top, right? A lot of these people, ladies and gentlemen, should be in prison. The problem is we don't have legislators with balls, we don't have politicians with balls, and that on both sides of the aisle. Republicans and Democrats. We don't have any stand-up people that will put these people in prison because what they are doing is criminal. It's criminal. When you steal hundreds of millions of dollars of tips of hard-working drivers and you settle for 20, 30 million, it's criminal. Those, those people should be locked up, right? The person that gave the order, surely that should be easily to establish who gave the order that it's okay to write an algorithm that's tips? DoorDash, Tony Zhu should know about this. He paid himself out $400 million. Tony, you should be in jail. He really knows it, right? But it's, it's so hard to, it's so hard to jail these CEOs because they will always have their fall guys, right? The, the head of security at Uber was thrown under the bus. When it's actually the CEO, the CEO who should go to jail, you know, but th these, these big, big wigs on top, some are always prisoners of a jail, right? They will throw other people under the bus before they go to jail. But you are dealing with mega criminals here. Tony Zhu, I'll tell it straight to your fucking face. You are a criminal and you know it. And Darrell Koshishawi, you're a criminal. So is Logan Green. So is John Zimmer. What they do what they the what what they do the the uh the orders that they give to their teams and it, it's criminal what they're doing to millions of workers so if you do not have strong unions if you do not have strong associations if you do not have people backing you up in the government look what they just did in france right the french government along with the most powerful unions said that's it uber eight dollars and sixty cents net is the minimum is the starting point per trip for a driver why can't we duplicate that in the united states in tanzania the government came down is a 25 percent commission gets added on for the driver right why can't we have politician and legislators and this is for this 
group of people that are running the show right now it was for the biden administration and for the trump administration both administrations were weak were so weak on these ride share companies they let them get away with murder right so when when the companies know they can continue to abuse and abuse and abuse and even if they get dragged into court and they'll settle for 10 cents on the dollar they don't care they're making money they are making money people are driving crazy We've got 105 people in the house 112 likes smash that like button ladies and gentlemen hey uh nick check in with us later and let us know what happened at the uber hub hopefully you get your uh, uber hacking resolved nick had his account hacked today immediately sent me like 20 screenshots and uh just get over there show them show them the pictures show them the documentation have them restore the account restore your password restore your email just show them right because your account was clearly clearly hacked go nick go nick uh reporting uber to the labor departments as you said it there are not enough people willing to report uber or lyft or dash to the labor department maybe they fear retaliation maybe they're too scared to put their real name down but listen folks if you want change there's all these different authorities the labor department the ftc your local legislators show them what is going on show them the abuse the abuse is so obvious it's so obvious it's so clear Dylan's in the house. Two likes. Thank you. Thank you. Shipped offered me $40 bonus for three deliveries. Did you take it? Did you do it? Did they pay you? More importantly, did they pay you? That's the most important thing here. Malvin says we need to start with the local government. Absolutely. Write letters to these fools. Why are you protecting the companies? It's all over the news, the abuse, the strikes. It's all over the news. Why are these companies protected? Why are they being protected? Why are the CEOs being protected? Why do they have immunity? We're in 67 minutes. I'm already on my third bottle of water. Drink water, my, my friends. More water, more water. Cool. I'm on my way to Hidden Hills by Calabasas to get my next client. Good money day should end on about $1,100 today. One day. And I will make a good video. I'm really trying to encourage more and more people to do a combination of ride share and private trips. Because once you do a combination of ride share and private trips, the more and more private clients you get, the more and more private trips you take, you will quickly understand what I'm talking about, right? Use both, phase the one out, phase the other in. You're phasing right out, you're phasing in your own LLC, your own company, you the company, you the true independent contractor, not the right share independent contractor. Now, because the money is getting less and less and less, you got to have plan B, C, and D ready, my friends. You got to have it ready. The sooner you start, the better. And I'll be talking about that, Aram. It's it's on my on my website, gigrocket.com. I have the private chauffeur. It explains everything: how to do the marketing, how to become a private chauffeur, what is needed, paperwork, money you need, how to build a fleet. It's all in that course. And I've had a few thousand people take that course, right? Never ever had, did I ever have to give a refund on that course because the only thing is people are, thank you, thank you, I should have watched this earlier. I should have started this earlier. I'm telling you, a combination of ride share and private trip. I'm not saying, hey, go extreme to the one side and do private trips only. No, you do a combination 
of ride share and private trips you start doing private trips and you will quickly see that six months 12 months one and a half years later you will start phasing out cherry 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 you will start combo right combo exactly you will start phasing out ride share because once you see the money in private trips remember you're running an llc now it's got all these costs you can write off right you can you can write off an insane amount of costs as an llc limited liability corporation or you could even form an s corporation if you wanted to right hit my friends up at business rocket ask alex you know what is the best company to set up as a private driver i send him hundreds of clients he sets up the companies for them um he'll send them over to tax advisors right but if you're a one-man show doing uber x day and night day and night day and night firstly when are you going to burn out when is your car going to burn out and is it worth it anybody want a mint i got the cool mints the blue ones and we are now going to go over got to start and going down downhill here as you can see let me just show you let me show my friends here traffic situation this is the traffic situation on the four or five that is the valley it's dark it's gonna rain it did rain Dietmar says I signed up to already thank you my friend so here it is so I'm now heading to the 101 this is the four or five of 122 likes my friends that is amazing thank you on this road roundabout right here this spot right by the sign Ventura I saw a minivan roll I had the actress Catherine Bell in the back I stopped the car and got the baby. The kid was four, three or four year old little baby. I got the car out, got the baby out of the car, was squished in the seat, had rolled four or five times right here. And uh, I have the video, it's in my channel. You got Catherine Bell filming it, the actress filming it. And I got out middle of the traffic here. The car was turned over upside down, got inside, got the little baby out. True story. Rothy's in the house. Thumbs up, cherries. Thumbs up. What if you can't get the type of vehicle you want? Nicholas, good question. Very good question. Now, if you're in a little Prius or so, don't bother. Like, you're not going to build a private clientele or a private company with a Prius. The Prius is a design car for UberX or Lyft Regular, right? But if you don't want to spend money and you want to start building out clients, you can always shoot for something like a Toyota Sienna in Excel and start building out a specific type of private clientele, families. But if you want to roll with the big boys, Ehab's in the house, thumbs up, thumbs up. Have a great day, my friend, to you and your family. But if you if you want to play with the big boys, you're either looking at a luxury car, a Cadillac, Suburban, maybe S550 Mercedes, and um, you can get amazing clientele and demand top dollars. Top, top dollars. Damn, look at those guys. They drive like idiots. Look at that sky, man. It's going to rain. I think it's going to rain. I think it's going to rain. We're on the 405. We are about to head to the 101. The 101 Ventura. That goes all the way up to Santa Barbara. To San Francisco. So it looks like it's opening up here. 405 is on my left is all congested. 101 looks a bit better looks a bit better but skies are black rain's coming 
the rain is coming and I am so sick and tired of the rain. Hit the like button, please, if you haven't hit the like button. We've got 125 likes. Um, the topic that I chose today, and I used France as an example uh, to give you a little bit of a backstory. French unions, powerful unions that represent drivers, as well as the French government, um, pushed Uber, or forced, let, let me rather use the word, forced Uber, to pay a minimum net, not gross, it was gross $10 and something, it was a net of $8.60 per trip, starting point. That's the starting point. So can you imagine a food delivery like Uber Eats or an Uber X trip in Alabama, in Oklahoma City, in Miami, in Seattle, in Denver, in LA, in New York, in New Jersey, starting point starting point eight dollars sixty that is what the french achieved how did they achieve it how did they achieve it they stuck together and the unions worked together problem is in the united states is that these unions with its idg mobile workers alliance riot should drive they're too split there's all these little islands they have like a little group of people here a little group but they don't have the collective bargaining power right they do not put the pressure on the government and say, listen, we're not putting up with this shit anymore. We're not putting up with Dara Koshishawi's shit. We're not putting up with Tony Zhu's shit. We're not putting up with Logan Green and John Z Zimmer's shit. So you better act. And what they did in France is they acted. So the government forced Uber. Don't like it? Piss off. Get out of here. Forced. $8.60 net. Net. It's $10 and something per trip starting point tanzania little country in africa uh right next to kenya uh right above mozambique i believe tanzania i've been there many times beautiful island of tanzania where i always used to go diving for crayfish and go on holidays called zanzibar maybe somebody's heard of that zanzibar but tanzania is beautiful wildlife safaris elephants diving beautiful beautiful holidays you can have there but tanzania the drivers, together with the government, forced Uber to increase their pay by 25%. By 25% this week. Back to back. France and Tanzania. So why the F-U-C-K? I don't want to use the word because I swear too much. Why the F-U-C-K? Can't we do that here in the United States? Why can't we do that in California? Why can't we do that in New York? Why can't we do that in Florida? Why can't we do that in Texas or in Colorado or New Mexico or Arizona? or wherever why why are we not able to force these companies to have a minimum starting point right a minimum starting point you you want to take the shortest shittiest little uber x drive starts at eight dollars and sixty doesn't matter if it's a mile that's the minimum eight dollars sixty if you want to go and get a hamburger from a mcdonald's down the road starting point eight dollars sixty and a tip hopefully please right we have to fight together <coughs> we have to fight together Ex exactly dylan's got it there's no union bargaining in the unit they're, they're, they're too too many fractions too disorganized they're not on the same page all working against each other they need if, if you want to get stuff done, you have to stand together in solidarity and put the pressure on those politicians and say, this is bullshit. People cannot survive. People are being exploited. People are being abused. We want a minimum starting point. Net, net $8.60 like the French starting point. Why not? If you're able to keep Uber going in France, in Paris, in Marseille, in Lyon, in Nice, in all of these cities that I was just in, 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 in summer, Uber was all over there, right? But there's a starting point of $8.60. Why not here in the United States?
130 likes, that's good. Let me show you what this mess looks like here. Here we are. That's not the Great Wall of China. That's not the Berlin Wall. No, it's the 101. The 101 is a shit show. It's always a shit show. Whoa, my phone fell off the, off the, whatever that magnet. That shit does happen. You can't take your eyes off the road, right? You can't like, oh my God, where's my phone? No, your eyes have to remain. My phone decided to take a walk. Now, if we had reception, if Verizon would work in one of the most expensive zip codes of LA, I could give you a guided tour. I could show you where the LA Chargers and the LA Rams players are. I could show you where the NBA players. I could show you where Madonna lives. I could show you, I, I could show you all these characters, right? But Verizon doesn't work in Hidden Hills. What's going on, uh, Verizon? I want to show my my subscribers the different houses. Where where does the weekend, the singer, the weekend live, right? They're all in Hidden Hills. And the house is selling for 10, 12 millions upwards. Upwards. My client just got a, an offer on his house for 40 million. He turned it down. They made him an offer for 40 million. They turned it down. One of my best clients. So, I wish I could drive in there, but. But, but but the Kardashians live there. I could show you where the Kardashians live. I could show you where Kanye West lives. I know them all. French Montana. They all live there. All hiding out in Hidden Hills. Jessica Simpson, been at her house, been at her parties. Beautiful house, would love to show you. But Verizon, Verizon will not cooperate. Hidden Hills is crazy, man. That's my turf. That's where I make the money, Hidden Hills. It's where I have most of my clients. I even have my own transponder. I don't have to check in at the gate. All my cars have, I got my own transponders from Hidden Hills. That's how long I've been driving in there. That's how much they trust me. Yeah, but that, they do take your license plate down, but I have transponders for my cars. So I just drive through, bypass those lines. And I know exactly where Verizon drops the signal. So if I want to keep this live feed going, I would have to drive up to a certain point. After that, the signal's gone. We're nearly there. I'm at um, 101 and Reseda right now. 83 minutes into the feed, 133 likes. If you have not hit that like button, it looks like this. Oh, Encino, yeah, Marshmallow. I, I know where Mar I know where he where he where he stays. Wayne, New Jersey, in. Come. Welcome, welcome. Vasilio, welcome. We're by Tampa right now. Skies are dark. Skies are gray. Howdy all, says Steve Alvarez in the house. Mention your name and your city. I'll give you a shout out. Let's give out some shout outs. But 72 people, let me give you a shout out. Say my name, say my name. Where are you from? Your name and your city. Your name and your city in the house. Who's in the house? Who's in the house? 
house. We've got Sonoma in the house. Dylan, where's that? Colorado? I'm gonna buy your course. Do it, my friend. Use the code HELP, H-E-L-P-20 for a 20% discount. Shouldn't be advertising it. Stephen from Los Angeles, Inland Empire in the house. Buddha, use code HELP20. Craig B, Portland's in the house. What's the weather up there like, Craig? Portland, you got rain? Is it raining? Portland gets a lot of rain. Asher in Orlando. Asher, what's it like in Orlando? Dylan's in the county. Oh, county. Okay, county. That's it. Raphael from Brooklyn, New York. We salute you. Signs Grove, Pennsylvania in the house. Coachella in the house. It's raining. Connecticut's in the house. Yes, sir. Sebastopol in the house. Detroit, Michigan. Aria's in the house. Cool. We're all over the United States here. Yeah, I love it. 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 But all the different cities in the house. I love it. So I love about these. Cold for us. 75. Damn. Moved again. Dylan says moved again. H-Town in the house. Elite driver from H-Town in the house. We salute you. Sienna is going to go down in price a little bit. Not much, unfortunately. Not much, unfortunately. Uber playing with our money. Yeah? Always, always playing with our money. Steve, you're right about that. When is fair ride share getting here? Which city? Put your city out there. I'll let the Canadians answer it. I'll tell the Canadians to jump into the live feed and answer your questions. Any questions about fair? Anybody has questions about fair ride share or fair eats, put them there. I'll tell the Canadians to answer them. Please talk about 2X Surge app banned from Uber. Why? Interesting. I'll look into that. I will promise you I'll look into that. 2X. Fair, House Fair LA, ready to rock and roll. Portland. Hello, everybody from Long Island, New York. We have Stella in the house. Kansas City. Great football team, Kansas City. Kasim's in the house. It's a long live feed, we're almost at 90 minutes. Email doesn't send me the confirmation code. Oh yeah, no, they, they, they do they have received the emails and you are registered, but they're getting back. We've had, we've had a lot of people register in the last five days, lots. And I'm talking thousands upon thousands upon thousands. So they're going through them for the Fair app, correct. And I did come down on them very, very hard. You better fix any technical glitches. Again, I'm not the techie guy, but I bring it up. I have complained to them about that. And it is a valid complaint. Upfront, fair. Sarcastic, I thought so. I thought you were being sarcastic, Asher. I got it. <laughs> oh, check this out. Where are we now? Oh, look, the clouds come through, the rain clouds. Oh, looks like it's going to be raining very soon here. Looks like it's gonna be raining. Almost reached Hidden Hills. And there will be a point, ladies and gentlemen. There will be a point where Verizon doesn't cooperate. Verizon does not cooperate. Raining in Palmdale, which means it's going to rain here soon. Class action suit. I do have videos on the class. I'll, if you want to, I'll make another video with my link. You'll get treated a little differently if you sign up under my link because I'm, I'm one of their top recruiters. So they take good care of my referrals. At least that's what I demand from the attorneys is that they take very very good care of my referrals to these class action lawsuits and uber hates me 
because I'm the top recruiter for law firms. They absolutely hate me. I cost them a lot of money. Not raining in Victorville yet? Might still be coming. I am about to exit Parkway Calabasas. Parkway Calabasas, baby. Tucson, Arizona. Boba from Tucson, Arizona in the house. Shout out to Tucson. I've done 21,000 rides on Lyft. Wow. That's impressive. That is, a, those are a lot of rides. 21,000 rides. Holy moly. Holy moly. Oh, you got everything resolved. Hey, Nick, was I right? Was the ride share professor right? Please say it. Did I give you the right advice, brother? Did I give you the right advice? Say it, baby. Say my name, say my name. Nicholas, say my name. Uber sucks in the OKC, Oklahoma City. Shout out to OKC in the house. Nicholas is back online. I am going to Coachella, yes, but just I have just one set of clients driving them up, driving them around, driving them back. And I'm demanding a shitload of money. And I get to stay at their wonderful house. You were right. Thank you, my friend. I'm trying to be right. I just want to give you the right advice. I'm, I'm happy. I'm very, very happy. Very happy you are back online making money. They should compensate you. Nicholas, they should compensate you for that half day. So very soon I should be losing the signal because we are literally right on the border of Hidden Hills and I do not know why for my life. I have no idea why Verizon kills the signal. I would, I would love to show you where Madonna lives. I'd love to show you where the weekend lives. I'd love to show you where all the foot player, football players live. I'd love to show you where the NBA players live. I'd love to show you it all. But I can't. I can't. Because of the freaking Verizon signal. Got to go now. Got to go make money. Make it up. Make up the deficit, Nick. The money you lost this morning. Go and make it up. Hustle till 12 o'clock tonight. Go hardcore, my friend. Norwalk in the house. Oh, there's my brother. There he is. There's my brother. There's my brother. There's my boss, boss man, boss man. There he is. See, it's how I treat people, my friends. It's how you treat people. Let's go and talk to boss man. It's how people, you go into Starbucks and they say your name and, and treat you nice, treat you nice. What's my, look, we're live, baby. We're live, look. We're live on, on YouTube, my brother. This is the legend. How are you? He's very the best, good, very good, best nicest guy. Always takes good care of me. Thank you, Baba. You doing well, my friend? Everything good. Life he's a, he's working at Shell. Life is good. He's oh, listen, this guy always smiles, always says hello. Is, has the nicest character. No, Love Baba. this guy. No. Always takes care of you're me, good, right? You're Appreciate good. you, my brother. Thank you, Baba. Thank it's you. how you treat people. Thank you. Baba. It's how you treat people, my friend. It's not difficult. The best gas attendant in the world. And the lifter upper. Okay, you choose two for me. Choose two for me. All right. One. No. Are we going to go for no sugar? No sugar. Two. I'm a sucker for deals. So it's two for, two for 575. That's it. So we get this one. And we get the yellow Club Tropicana. There we go. There we go. And then I'm being really bad now. Being really, really bad. Being, I'm cheating right now. Cheating, I'm cheating, I'm cheating, I'm cheating. Cheating, cheating, cheating. This is my cheating stuff. How are you, buddy? Two of these. We'll do some cheating here.
I owe you. Be eight fifty nine. Cool. Eight fifty nine. Thank you so much. Boss man, life is good. I'm a junk food, I've got my red bull, I'm a happy man. Thank you. Bye. So we are at the best gas station. We've got the, let's see what cars do we have here. A lot of big people get their cars cleaned here. Boss man. Boss man. What car is that? Ooh, I think that looks like a nice Mercedes. Let's go check it out. Let's go check it out, baby. What is that? Oh, that looks like a nice... Ooh, that's a nice car. What is that? Ooh, she's a beauty. Oh, she's a beauty. Oh, she's a beauty. Oh, I love the styling. Is that the new styling? Wow. She's a beauty. That's a stunning car. Damn, look at that, man. Calabasas, Kardashians. That's a beautiful car. It's shiny, 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 shiny. Look at those rims, eh? I wish I could get my Tesla rims like this. What's the magic? What, what do you put on that? That's magic. What? Which one, what spray do you put on that? Man, those are clean. Never have I in my life seen shiny mags like that. Look at these guys. It's too shiny. It's brand new. Gracias. We're on, on YouTube. Guys, we're on YouTube. Look. Patron. On YouTube. We're on YouTube live. If from Calabasas, the best guys that know how to polish your cars. It looks like Nueve, brand new. The best. Love these guys. Look at the boss car, boss cars, all boss cars here. Boss cars, boss cars. All the boss cars. All the boss cars. We got the food, got the drinks. Got the food, got drinks. Oh yeah, that's a little pit stop here. A little pit stop. You guys see those nice cars? Did you guys see that freaking Bentley? Did you see that pimped out Cadillac? Did you see what they did to that Tesla? Holy moly! Was that shiny or what? Salute! Ladies and gentlemen, Red Bull gives you wings. This is you, this is me, salute. Salute, salute. Man, you see, I know everyone here. You know why? Because you treat people nice. Everywhere I go, I can promise you one thing you'll learn about me. I treat people the way I want to be treated. We got Gail Rusty in the house. Question is fair, right? Already active. Um, as far as I know, the LA market, all the, all the drivers already, all registered over a thousand, and they're in rolling restaurants. They're busy in rolling restaurants. They hurt a certain amount of restaurants, or restaurant chains, then they, then they start. This is a place where I always get my magazines, right? So, for example, I want to show you something from here. Let me see if I can do this. See, um, over there. Let me show you here. I will go and I always get my magazines for my cars, free magazines. Calabasas, sports cars, all of those are all free magazines. So I always, I always get for all the vehicles, I put them, replenish them every week or every second week I, I replenish the magazines, right? For my clients, for my private clients and sometimes for rideshare clients. Salute. 140 likes. I like that. It's a lot. We're a 100 minute 
live feed. We are on the border of Hidden Hills. If I drive 500 feet up the road, I will guarantee you Verizon will drop my signal. So this is the point. The Shell station. Uh, you always see Ferraris. This is Calabasas, is where I stay. You always see Bentleys, Rolls Royces, Ferraris, just around the corner, half a mile from here. Kardashians, half a mile from here. Kanye West, half a mile from here. Madonna, half a mile from here. The Weekend, half a mile from here. The Quarterback, the Rams, they're all here. They all bring their cars here. Charge super high gas prices, but they have the best valet cleaning service you've ever seen. Right, it's right off Parkway, Calabasas, and the 101. So, and they've got great staff, always nice. I'll always drop in for some gas if I need gas, get my magazines here. Sometimes I get a Red Bull, a little lifter upper, or I'll get a snack. This, by the way, this, by the way, is poison. Last time I've had this poison was like two months ago. And this is not a free ad for Doritos, right? I'm not, I'm not, I'm not sponsored by Doritos. No, 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 no. I like these once in a while. Every two months, you will see me cheat and eat a little bit of poison. The Doritos. You will see me drink poison. Red Bull. So today is a cheating day. It's not my normal day. <sighs> Salud. I'm going to give you guys one. There's one for you guys. You guys can take that one. That one's for you. That one's for you. Um, another one for you guys. There's another one for you guys. It's hard to balance these son of a bitches. I don't want to balance. Those two, you guys can take those two. That's for you guys. That's for you. You guys can take that Red Bull and those. Um, this is mine. This is mine. The rest is yours. These are flaming hot. These burn your tongue. Holy shit, it's hot. Spicy nacho. Oh, here's this beautiful, beautiful, beautiful Bentley. Beautiful. That's a sexy car. That is a sexy car. That is a beautiful car. Holy shit. Let me show you. Red Bentley, baby. Oh, beautiful job. I'm going to give you a big tipper. Hey, he better give you a hundred buck tip. hundred bucks for this. Look at, look at the job he did. This Bentley is shining. Pay him a hundred bucks. Shiny, 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 shiny Bentley. Look at that. Cannot get cleaner than that. Absolutely not. Ladies and gentlemen, you cannot get that. That's you. See, I balanced them up there for you. Dun, 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 dun. That's it. That's for you guys. There's two Doritos. Help yourself, help yourself. And a Red Bull. Help yourself, guys. It's a buffet. There's your buffet. It's for you, Red Bull. This is for me. Cheers to the weekend. It's not Friday yet. It's not Friday yet. All I know is these things are spicy.
You want some spicy? Yeah? Spicy, you want? Caliente. You want some? No? It's too spicy. I'm offering you, no, it's too spicy. <laughs> Oh shit, the chips fell down. This here used to be my sponsor in South Africa. Made so much money through these guys. Used to do the big raves and concerts. This was my biggest sponsor, Red Bull. Money. About two, three hundred thousand dollars per event sponsor. Every time I did a big rave, I had a fly in the big DJs, they sponsored. They, they, these guys spend so much sponsorship money because they want to reach a big audience fast. I have the Model X. I have the, the, the Tesla Model X, the new one. That's my hobby. That's my weakness, cars. I have too many cars. My wife says, start selling your cars, baby. We'll have to start selling your cars, your classic cars, your sports cars, your... So, women don't understand that it's like a, it's like a crazy, crazy thing. Boys and toys, right? Boys and toys. Boys and the toys. My wife would only understand that. And she's like, no, Torsten, you got to sell that car. You got to sell this. You got to sell the trucks. You got to sell... I'm busy negotiating to buy a big rig, 40 feet, and I'm going to turn into a big camper van. Homie disc, what's a homie discount? Where's the, where's the boss, the driver? Gone? As, as asked him, where's the boss, the driver of that car? That's you? No, no, I wish. Beautiful, huh? My is Nissan. We should, oh, we should, we should take it for a drive before he oh, gets yeah. back. <laughs> Guys. Check that beast, man. Look at that. Look at that beast. That's a car, baby. <laughs> that is a car. That's a car, ladies and gentlemen. Parked right next to me. 22 Escalade. That's a good price at the auction. That's a good price. Just make sure that uh, no accidents. That Bentley. Mm, mm, mm. Yeah, what, Marcus, what's up with that bullshit? Lyft, Lux, black SUV, lowered long trip ride prices. Is Uber going to follow? They will follow. Taking away more from the driver, charging the rider more. Bullshit. Let's go. Eating chicken. Eating chicken is better than eating this shit. This spicy show. Eat chicken. Way healthier. Hundred and forty three. Anybody hasn't hit the Yes sir, that's correct. It's Mark like a flint. KH in the house. Where are you from? KH, are you from South Africa? 
je het smaakwekker. Hoe is het van Holland? Het is van de Nederlanden van Zuid-Afrika. Ja, in een surge area, getting a request 10 miles away. What's up with that? Nederlands. Shout out to the Netherlands. Die Nederlands is in die huis. Baie goed, baie goed. Dankjewel, dankjewel Nederlands. We love you. I was in Amsterdam in summer. Best time. Best time in Amsterdam. Best time. Love, 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 love Holland. Love the Nederlands. Dankjewel, baie dankjewel. Love my Dutch friends. Nederlander. Shout out to the Netherlands, baby. Great country. Great people, great country. Love it. One of my favorite cities, Amsterdam. This shit makes my clothes all red. Dara, I'm ready. I'm ready. Dara, you want to come on my channel if I can interview you? I'm only going to ask you a couple of tough questions. Dara, come on my channel. I want to interview you. I've put that invite out many times. Get one of your correspondents to set up a Zoom call with me, Dara. Andre's in the house. Gilu says, Professor need to stop hitting the gym for the ladies. <laughs> I do my workout every day. Shit, this is spicy. My, my, my mouth is like on fire. Fuego. Finish? Today, finish? Did good. Make good money, huh? They make good money. These guys get paid. These rich people tip them when they clean the cars. I've seen the tips. They work hard. These car cleaning guys work very, very hard. Slow down, kids. Running out through the thing here between the cars. Dangerous. Um, the Sienna, I've had the old Siennas, this is my favorite one, this is the 2023 hybrid, and um, they go for about 10, 12 over sticker price at the moment, they go for about 55, 55 to 57, and I got it for 45, brand new, zero miles, 45, I had to fly to Vegas. Pick this sucker up in Vegas. Usually, use my Escalade when um, I have big groups, a lot of luggage. If I have a lot of luggage, the Sienna doesn't work. Watch the crumbs. The crumbs are making me red. The crumbs are destroying my clothes, making them red. But then, my friends, we have the Red Bull to wash it down. The Red Bull. Guys are finished for the day. How much is UberX there in the United States for a kilometer for a mile it it, it it varies I mean we work in miles so one mile is 1.6 kilometers but it's trash Andre says I need to apply for CEO position even if I could just be CEO for one week I would fire a lot of people and replace them with people that understand how to treat people. 
I would get a really good headhunting company and bring people in that really know how to work with the drivers, not with the investors. These guys just bow down and do this all day long with the investors. We need people that are able to understand. People also recruit a couple of people on street level, right? That understand what happens on the ground, what happens at airports, what the true people that understand about safety. Not people that like, that they came in as an investor and bought their position, like Gus Faulkner. He bought his position. Not those type of people don't belong in Uber or Lyft. Now it's pissing rain. I cannot believe it. It's actually pissing rain, right? We, we, we need people in these companies, and I'm talking DoorDash, I'm talking Uber Eats, I'm every single one of them. You need people that understand the industry. You need someone from the safety world, right? You need, I mean, don't get me started here. <laughs> many, there's too many things you could do in one week at Uber just to, just to, just to change the culture. It's, it, it, it literally starts with a cultural change. How people treat people. That's where it starts, ladies and gentlemen. Because if you don't have that as a, as, as a platform, if you don't have that as a starting point, ladies and gentlemen, how can you ever build on that? How can you ever build the trust? How can you ever get drivers to respect you when all they have received year after year after year is abusive behavior? Right? So you need competent people and you need people that understand people. People on a higher executive level, I don't mind, that don't pay themselves $42 million, that don't pay themselves $2 million out of company money for security, that don't fly around on a jet. You need people that are willing to work for realistic salaries and you really need people that are willing to come down to street level to meet and talk to drivers. Not this arrogance. These guys, they don't even go in a car and, and attempt to do food deliveries or do some ride share trips to learn the business. I mean, Dara Kushashawi did one ride share trip and fucked up. Uh, he did one Uber Eats delivery on his bicycle or something and messed up. And then he thought he knew what it was like. No, that doesn't represent the everyday life of a gig worker, just taking one trip on a bicycle, doing one food delivery and doing one ride here. No, that is not the typical life or the typical day in the life of a gig worker. It's not. Holland Commission is 25% and 5% tax. Well, drink to that. And you know why, Holland? Because you fought for it. The Dutch fought for that. They had to fight for that. Thank you for sharing, Nederlandse. The Nederlandse. Dankjewel, dankjewel. One of my favorite, favorite countries. When, when we arrived in Germany in summer, this past summer, I stayed with the most wonderful families. I mean, amazing people. And then the first country that I went to, where did I go? Holland. Alstublieft, Alstublieft. All right, now I am going to go and make money. I've had my little pit stop. I've cheated on bad nacho food. I cheated on a Red Bull. Prost, 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 kameraden. It's millions of airport riders daily. I say we refuse to... We're going to shut all those airports down. Cars in the house, yellow cab drivers in Istanbul sued Uber. Good. Business and operating illegally. Go to the court. Make your case, right? So I thank you all. Um, at first I thought it was Friday. We had the weekend. No, we have one more day to go. So I'm going to make some more videos later. 
Um, I really appreciate you guys being here for all two hours. It was a two hour live feed, a long live feed. 148, I just ask, we can get two more likes so we can get it up to 150, that would be huge. So 57 people in the house. If the two more likes, the likes look like this. Dos por favor. Un de, s'il vous plaît. Uh, Ian Tuir, as belief. One, two, please. Eins, zwei, bitte. Two more. So we, there we are. We're on 150. I appreciate you all. That's 150. That's you guys. I love you all. Main thing is go and stay safe. Be safe at your job, food deliveries, ride share, whatever you're doing. Be safe. Be alert. Always be on the if people getting in your car with masks or people that have like fake names or emoji faces, you may want to decline. I'm just saying, you may want to decline. A couple of guys approaching your cars in mask, you may want to leave. Right, so the main thing is here is to stay safe. Because if you're safe, the money will follow. And I also ask you kindly to do a combination, a combo of ride share and private trips. At least start exploring it so that you can phase the one out and step into true independent contractorship. Bless you all. God bless you. Shout out. We've had the Netherlands here. We've had a lot of different cities in the U.S. represented tonight. We've had a lot of overseas guests in these two hours. You guys rock, baby. You rock. You rock and roll. Until next live feed. Goodbye.